It was a horrifying story. A 20-year-old college Republican and McCain volunteer, Ashley Todd, she reported to Pittsburgh police that a six-foot-four-inch black man assaulted her at an ATM, put a knife to her throat, demanded money, brutalized her. She said he carved the letter B into her face and sexually assaulted her, all while yelling, quote, you are going to be a Barack supporter. Her attacker, she said, had seen a McCain sticker on her car before the assault. Her picture on the Dredge Report with a screaming headline, McCain volunteer attacked and mutilated in Pittsburgh. Sympathy phone calls direct from Senator McCain and Governor Palin shortly after. And Ashley Todd's own online expressions of gratitude and calls of support for the McCain campaign. Except every bit of the story was a lie. Ashley Todd admitted today as the details became flimsier and flimsier. It remains to be known if Ashley Todd acted entirely alone in this pitiful hoax. She is not the first college Republican dirty trickster. But there is something depressingly unoriginal about Todd's race baiting. 1994, South Carolina, Susan Smith blamed the disappearance of her two sons on being carjacked by a black man who drove away. A lie. She herself had killed the boys by driving the car into a lake. 1989, Boston. Charles Stewart claims that a black man carjacked him and his wife, robbed them, shot his wife in the head and him in the stomach. A lie. Charles Stewart himself murdered his pregnant wife in cold blood. And I'm not going to detail the history of lynching and false accusations against black men concerning white women in this country. I'm just going to cite it here. In these cases, as with Ashley Todd, what may tell us the most about our country is whether law enforcement and the media believe these stories instinctively. Joining us now, Melissa Harris Lacewell, Associate Professor of Politics and African American Studies at Princeton University. Melissa, thanks for coming back on the show. Absolutely. It's always great to be here. A recent Gallup poll says Obama is positioned to win the largest share of white voters of any Democrat in more than three decades. Uh, same poll shows 44% of non-Hispanic white voters uh, presently su supporting Obama. The, high, the highest number for a Democrat since 40, 47% of whites backed Carter in 1976. Uh, looking at the numbers, looking at the success of Barack Obama thus far, are you seeing old racism, old patterns in a new country where they don't fit anymore? Well, I mean, certainly what I'm seeing is a country which is standing on the precipice of something new. Um, our country is clearly saying, you know what, we no longer want to be motivated by the politics of fear. We're interested in a politics of hope and optimism, a politics of discipline, a politics of vetting our stories and our running mates before we actually announce them to the American public. You know, a different kind of politics. So um, I don't see this as meaning the end of American racism. This is not the end of American racial inequality. But it is, it is the end, I believe, of kind of a reflexive assumption that African Americans are always in the wrong, that whites are always in the right. So it's a willingness to recognize the world as a more complicated place. Well, speaking of complications, I mean, the reactions to this initially were complicated. I mean, the, the, if, you, if you can get a copy of today's New York Post on the newsstand today, you will see their totally uncritical take on this young woman's story, essentially repeating it. We know that the McCain campaign, a, a Pennsylvania official for the McCain campaign, um, repeated the most inflammatory version uh, of this story to people before any of the details had been confirmed. But we also saw local law enforcement issue this woman a lie detector test and not necessarily necessarily go out and start randomly rounding up African-American men who are six foot four to find out uh, if any of them could be could have this blamed on them. We did see sort of a mixed reaction. What does that tell you? Well, I mean, I think that your point about local law enforcement is really the key issue here. The script from which Ashley Todd was reading in describing herself as a young white woman sexually assaulted by a violent black man in the name of sort of black political power, right, Barack Obama, is a very old script. It's at least 100 years old, and it goes to the racial terrorism in the American South. But the key in that old-fashioned racial terrorism was that African Americans were outside the the power of the law the law didn't step in to protect them as citizens in this case what we saw instead was a kind of measured response a willingness obviously to listen to a potential victim we don't ever want to get to a place where we don't listen to you know alleged victims of sexual assault and that's part of why it's so dangerous to, to say it's happened when it hasn't or any but it was crime, also right? sort of uh, that's right that's yeah. right but but particularly for women around around sexual assault. Um, but I, but th that measured response on the part of the police is an indication of just how different our country is now than it was 100 years ago and even 50 years ago. 
Melissa harris Lacewell, Associate Professor of Politics and African American Studies at Princeton University. I knew there was something more important here than just feeling incredibly, incredibly sad and mad at that young yeah. woman. Uh, thanks for joining us.